colleges with Vishwas Healing and Healthcare. He also leads the clinical hypnotherapy wing of this institute. Sir is also a charter member with Rotary International and he is currently chair diversity, equity and inclusion with Rotary. He has won many, many awards and achievements in his fields. Uh, recently, he got the Platinum Award at Taj Palace, Chanak Kipuri, for his amazing contributions and key roles in various social uh, positions he holds. And he was the former head Delhi chapter of California Hypnosis Institute. He has a natural fear for training and counseling, combined with a very deep desire to contribute back to young professional teams. And he has led and he has trained and many he has conducted many workshops for the same. And he has trained many, many people around, around about it. Sir has even done many shows on the subject of hypnotherapy and past life regression at various channels in media sector. That's an amazing uh, bio data, sir. I can't, I can't go through it, all of it. But uh, if I were to go on speaking, I would take entire one hour to complete your introduction. Uh, well, we welcome you, sir. And also we have with us Dr. Pooja Anand Sharma. Ma'am is the founder chairperson of Vishwas Healing Center. She is a consultant a psychotherapist, a psychologist, and alternative healing matter and uh, therapist. She is also a clinical uh, hypnotherapist, and she has various contributions to the world of mental health, and she has introduced over 25 modalities that holistically approach various aspects of mental health and blending the principles of psychology in the various and she brings out practical tools which are actually required to help us to go through this journey of uh, well-being and long-lasting happiness so we welcome you ma'am the stage is all yours and we are waiting to hear from both of you Gunjan, can I take you minutes? So Gunjan, Gunjan, sure, can sure, I sure, sure, minutes if you permit me before please, we... sir, please sir Hand over the mic to our esteemed uh, faculty today. So, guys, I always say that, as I always start with some small trivia, please put the cameras on. See, we have invited people to speak to you. I think our breakfast is all done. And if May does not come, maybe we may not be here. So, I have the bed button. But please put the cameras on for a few seconds as uh, we do customarily. Just put the cameras on, say hello to our. You see, when you talk about something like this, it's, they're going to look into your eyes. The people who heal, they heal with the eyes. If the camera is closed, the one port is open. So as we are putting the cameras on, Madhvi, you are driving or she will be OT? I think so. No, she is driving. So guys, can someone tell me, who is the biggest enemy of ours? Who is the biggest enemy of ours? Who is the biggest enemy of who is the biggest enemy in the world? I keep asking, you know, yeah. somebody who's somebody who's deflating your ego, somebody who's deflating your growth. Yesterday, I had done a podcast with Iron Man of the country, woman of the country. They called an Iron Man, Priya. It was a very good discussion with her that uh, how she became an Iron Man. So we're talking about what deflates us. Who, who pulls us down, who, who takes away our energy, who sucks our energy. Who's the, who, are the, who are the people around you? Can someone tell me? Can you spot somebody in your life who can take you we back? Are, yes? We ourselves. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? <laughs> can you see Shilpa on the screen? Is it Shilpa on the screen? I don't know. Yes, sir. Good morning. Hi, my dear girl. <laughs> well, I was missing you said terribly and I had this opportunity to join. So I just wanted to say good morning and listen lovely. to your lovely, lovely. awesome. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Great. Thank you, Shipa, for joining. Thank you, sir. Delivery? I heard delivery. I yes, heard thank delivery. you. Okay, I'll quickly catch up later. So, great, fantastic. So, who said that? Who's the biggest enemy we have? Somebody said the biggest enemy is us. Bindu, Dr. Bindu, ma'am, said that. Bindu, ka hai? Not si Bindu. Where is Bindu? Bindu, camera to off kar rakha hai. Are, 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 are. Okay. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's fantastic. See, what pulls us back is our something called resistance. And for that, I tell all our all our friends that there's a very book, a very good book, uh, which is called the 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 war of art. It's a very famous book, Art of War. We all read that book. 
But the mother of all the books is called the Bore of Art. If you get time, I'll normally show in the classes. I'm going to show you the But all of you should order the book, the Bore of Arts. If you buy that book and you understand, then you probably don't need anyone to heal you. So with this, let's see how we can unwind, we can empty our mind. And I hand over to the stage to two very dear friends. And not only friends, but they are very qualified people. And with all humbleness, gratitude, we invite you, Ramalitha and Pooja. The stage is all yours. And they're all doctors. They all are having something in their mind. And we'll all love to learn and understand from you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Talwar. That's a really, really uh, wonderful introduction as well. And a wonderful aspect that you mentioned as um, uh, who is our biggest enemy. And uh, rightly said, it is uh, us because uh, uh, we can be our biggest enemy and we can be our best friends as well. So the both things holds true. Uh, why we say that we are the biggest enemy? Because there are certain uh, where this enemy, हम कहते हैं कि enemy कहाँ से start होता है वो enemy का process हमारे level पे बड़ी simple सी बात है self talk we don't focus on what we are talking to ourselves generally we uh, as uh, you said that uh, we ourselves are into a very stressful job when we are dealing with patients clients it's very difficult uh, at that point of time for a doctor who is healing at that point of time it's very difficult uh, so what are aapka mental strength and emotional strength khud jo healer hai uska khud ka connect apne aap se aur spiritual connect it's very important how do you keep that so aaj ka jo pura the whole process jo uh, what we will be talking about um, the therapies the healing modalities Mm, hypnosis we all will be sharing uh, that how to keep yourself mentally uh, strong emotionally strong along with that uh, we will also i will also be particularly i will be sharing uh, in my 22 years of experience i have come across people uh, so many uh, females dealing and struggling with um, uh, uh, you know fertility issues unexplained fertility um, PCOS, um, fibroids, uh, UTIs, and so many, so many case studies. I will be sharing one of the case studies before I start. I will like to uh, study uh, on this uh, platform if you give me an opportunity. Can I share the screen with you? Uh, you are the host, Pooja. I'm sure you got the authority now. Are you able to share? Uh, Gunjan, is she the co-host? Uh, I'll take, sir. You can share, ma'am. You can share. Okay, sure, sure. I'm sharing my screen and I'm just sharing one of uh, my clients who has gone through IVF and failed IVF in the first place and then the second IVF she went through. And all that, all her journey is explained in this five, ten minutes. If... Uh, you can listen to her story. It's one of the client, and it is very inspiring story of uh, Anjana. And um, uh, just let me know if uh, my screen is. Maybe we can see your screen now. So this very inspiring story, which I yes. will like to share. There's this is one of the testimonial uh, of our work in twenty two years in. Uh, unexplained fertility and uh, like all the feminine issues that happens also the couples who are going through um, the stress of IVF so uh, I hope hello my name is Anina I'm very happy we can't get the audio properly, Kishan. Something wrong with the audio. Have you gone to the sound sharing option or you're playing? I think, I think yeah. I Go to sound sharing. There are three dots on the top. Uh, press those three dots, you'll get an option of sound sharing. You go from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I'm so sorry for the some uh, one minute. I'm just wondering. It's a little, I think, a little glitch here. Uh, technical glitch. One second. Till the time, uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, I will ask uh, Dr. Navneet to take over for a minute uh, till I get back to the this audio for you, for you all. Absolutely. Good. Okay. All right. So I guess today's going to be a very interesting, perhaps very enriching understanding about the human mind. Because when I say human mind, it is actually we are looking at a visible body. Because whatever we are experiencing in the mind, we are going to experience that in our body. And here when I'm saying it's a mind, we are not looking at a hardware, we are looking at a software. And many times we confuse this phenomena altogether. So whenever pe pe people say mind, they have a tendency in the back of the mind. Are we talking about um, left hemisphere of the brain? Are we talking about the right hemisphere of the brain? Are we talking about cerebrum, cerebellum, metal oblongata? Well, we are not talking about the physical structure of the brain. We are looking at the program, how this functionality is taking place. If I make the analogy of a computer or a laptop, there's a hardware structure, but that hardware has a software. Without the software functioning in its optimum level, the hardware has no use. Similarly, whenever we experience something in our body, the reasons of the mind cannot be ignored. And when you're talking about stress, emotional conflicts, we're talking about something about the thoughts. We're talking something about the emotions. So everything in our lives is governed by these two elements of our lives. How do we think? How do we feel? Because if we are not aware of our feelings and our thoughts, probably at some level, we are going to experience some kind of dysfunctionality either in our hormonal levels, at our pituitary glands, at our endocrine levels. And beyond that, we are going to experience even recovering from a certain kind of illnesses also. Because many times we realize that the medicines are not responding. Why it is not responding? Is the client, is the patient mentally prepared to heal one's own conditions? And specifically addressing to today's topic, when we are talking about something like unexplained infertility, the term unexplained infertility has its origins in a thought that almost we are not looking at, we are not able to find something physically tangible at the moment, but there is something which is psychological. There is something which is going on, which is beyond the physical senses of awareness. And probably at one level, we are even understanding that the physical conditions may be at some level, maybe at the optimum level, but we are not able to understand why the physical condition is coming like that, where, why the test reports are coming like that. Which means there is something which we are unaware at a cognitive conscious level. But that emotional conflict may be because the person is going through a hard time in understanding one's own self, a hard time in understanding one's own relationships, a hard time in experiencing some emotional conflicts with the partner, or a hard time in experiencing in the concept of intimacy, or there could be a backlog of previously programmed information related to pregnancy, related to conception, or perhaps the person feels not confident 
about one's own body to bring a life into this world. There will be some underlying belief systems which has been an influential element when you're looking at these conditions. And I'm not talking just a, a you know, just a, you know, a layman's speech, but let me just put this into a very scientific origins to it. Because when you're looking at the concept of alternative healthcare or psychological element to it, it has all, it has been a documented element over these years, which means whatever that I'm going to talk right now is something which has been proven by the medical science and the medical fraternity, which means there are studies which are already in support of this entire phenomena, which is happening in our lives. And that is why I often say the story of our life is the story of our mind. And if we are not able to heal the story of our mind, we are going to experience difficulty in recovering from any physical conditions. And which is also one of the reasons why a lot of people often have this, you know, spontaneous recoveries, you know, when they are able to heal their depression, heal their anxiety issues, they are able to have a successful IVF, a successful conception, chances of miscarriages getting uh, lesser than before. All this is an indication that the mind has its own powerful mechanism to heal our life. So if I want to start this whole concept, what is exactly that is happening in our mind? Many times when we are going through life's hardships, we are often in a crossroads. And when we are in the crossroads, we don't know how do we handle ourselves. The biggest battle is to know how to handle our own emotions, how to handle our own thoughts. And if there is a mechanism to do it, the life becomes simple. By simply addressing the thought, a lot of things can be corrected. But many times, we don't know where exactly the point of origin is. Where exactly the reference point to heal that. And that is perhaps when we're looking from a very psychological concept or a psychological understanding, we're looking at the reference point, which has triggered the entire incident. We will understand this in a bit, bit more deeper. I believe uh, if you are able to play the video, we can understand this reference point correctly. Because the reference point, if it is understood correctly, we can heal from its genesis or heal from its origins. Uh, definitely. I think I, yeah, definitely. Uh, you are very right. Uh, because um, uh, understanding what the conflicts are, as uh, rightly said by uh, Navneet Malab, uh, this actually it is most of the problems are psychosomatic in nature. I'm not saying all. I'm saying most of the problems are psychosomatic. It simply means it has a mind-body relationship. If there and and mostly the physical symptoms are the manifestation of your mental and emotional conflicts. So if we are able to heal and deal with the mental and emotional conflicts on the first stage, it really helps in the ongoing treatment of the patient, definitely. And uh, in uh, support of that, having said that, I will be uh, sharing this video, one of the video of our client. I'm sharing this screen with you, all of you. I hope there is no glitch this time. I really wish. So uh, my uh, uh, screen is visible, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hello. 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 I underwent a follicle study for almost six cycles. Then I went for IUI. 
but uh, unfortunately, I could not conceive. And all my reports, all the diagnostic reports, they were all normal. All normal. There was uh, nothing that could sum up to why I was not getting pregnant. So the doctor said that mine is a case of an identified reason for not conceived. There was no specific reason why I was not able to conceive. And because of this, I went into depression. I don't know what was a depression. I don't know what was it actually, but there was a feeling where I just didn't feel good. I started feeling bad about myself. I felt that I was complete. I lacked something. Because being a mother is like a very, very normal thing. Everyone gets a child. Everyone becomes a mother. But I was not able to do that. So uh, after trying for almost two years for a baby, I really lost hope. And I did think about IVF as an option. But I also knew that IVF involves a lot of emotional turmoil. There are a lot and lots of hormonal medicines given to the patient, which in turn results in a lot of mood swings, a lot of changes in the body. And I thought that I need to be emotionally strong if I want to get into the process of IVF. And I was not ready at that time. So <laughs> my relationship with my husband also went for turmoil because I didn't like anything about my life, not my husband, not my life, not my routine, not my body, nothing at all. I didn't like anything. It was at this time that my husband, uh, Praveen, he convinced me to meet a counselor, a psychologist, so that she could help me out, sort my emotional turmoil at least. And uh, we found out about Dr. Pooj. I was through Google only that we found out about her, and I met her. Uh, I still remember our first meeting. It was a um, very, very, very nice conversation that I had after ages. I felt safe. That's the word I would use. I felt safe. Otherwise, you know, the society, <laughs> just asking how to get married, and it's like, when are you giving the good news? When are you giving the good news? And after <laughs> two, three years of marriage, four years of marriage, people start asking you, did you meet a doctor? Is there a problem? Did you consult this person? Did you consult that person? They suggest so many doctors. They suggest so many pujas. They suggest this, that, blah, 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 blah. And I didn't feel like meeting anyone, having a conversation with anyone, because every conversation was around me not getting pregnant. So after a long, long time, I had a conversation with somebody and I felt safe. I felt I could talk to her. And it was with Dr. Pooja that I got an understanding that other than these medical science procedures, which I'm going to, that is the hormonal medicines, uh, lifestyle wherein I'm trying to stay fit, there needs to be an alternative outlook to it, which involves mental goodness, wherein I need to stay happy. I need to heal my soul, my body. I need to overcome a lot of emotions which are stuck somewhere, and in turn, I'm stuck because of them. So, Dr. Pooja not only guided me through the issues, she counseled me very nicely, very nicely, and with the, over a period of time, things improved. I started feeling good about myself. I was the same person, but I started feeling good about myself. I started gaining confidence. My health became better just because I was emotionally stable. I was getting emotionally healed. That I started feeling better, health my too. And with time, I decided, okay, I'm mentally fit enough to go for IVF. I went in for IVF. I went in for IVF. I conceived. I carried the pregnancy for almost 24 weeks. But unfortunately, the pregnancy could not continue further. I had to go into labor early, and we could not save the kids. They were twins. We could not save them. But but, but, but it was a big, big, big loss. But this time around, I was so strong, so strong mentally. I could take this break. Yes, I felt heartbroken. I felt sad. I felt lost. But I found myself. I took home of myself and came out of it all because of the uh, programs, alternative healing techniques, the doctor closure. And over the period of time that I was in contact with her, I was undergoing treatment with her and developed for me. Help and I realized that yes, 
that is the power of healing, that is the power of alternative treatments. It's a miracle, trust me, it's a miracle, you know. I just couldn't believe that I'm the same person, somebody who could get upset on the fall of a needle, could control herself, get a grip of herself, and move ahead after losing her babies, which is what she's watching in my life. I got in contact with Dr. Fisher again, and she developed healing programs, psychoanalysis programs, according to my needs, my comfort, which was very important to her. She took care of my comfort a lot. My time, everything was about me, mixed with her specialization into various healing techniques. And we started working on myself again. This time around, when I went in for IVF, I went with a holistic approach. Medically, IV was going on, all the treatments was going on, and on the healing level, or I would say alternative healing level, Dr. Pooja was with me, supporting me at every point, providing me support with her healing techniques, and a miracle happened. I can see it again with twins. I delivered two healthy babies, and they are one year old now. I really, really, really believe that combining healing techniques and various other techniques, which involves psychoanalysis, psychotherapy, and maybe I don't know names of many, but combining them with the medical procedure of IV did help me in a positive way. Did help me in a positive way. I conceived. I was relaxed throughout the pregnancy. I was so relaxed, I was not worried at all. I was positive all the time, which was not the case in my first pregnancy, which was without the combination of healing and medical techniques. But this time around, when I combined medical techniques and healing, I was very relaxed, I was very positive. And despite the you know minor complications which came, I was positive. I knew that babies are here, they are mine, and they will come happily, healthily in this world. And it happened. Though I delivered prematurely, the babies were healthy. They didn't give me need any, any, any external support. And we came home with two beautiful babies, a boy and a girl. Yes, a boy and a girl. I named them Kavya and Kabi. And they're one year old now. And I continued with their healing as well. And I highly, highly, highly recommend that people should be more open towards these healing techniques. I'm not saying that they should leave medical science altogether. No, they should not leave medical science altogether. It is required, but you should combine these techniques with them and you will see the miracles like I have seen. And I will be forever, forever, forever thankful to my destiny that I met Dr. Pooja and she helped me through my life. And I am a very happy person now, a very healthy person now. And always, always, always positive be whatever the situation is. Thank you, Dr. Pooja. Thank you so, so, so much. That was that was such an amazing thing to listen to, ma'am. And what I what I could really feel good about what she said, she felt safe. So a patient feeling safe with a doctor is the thing which you need to like help us uh, how to build the confidence. So that was uh, really uh, humble of Anjana saying, um, uh, but uh, the point is that she took the courage. She never gave up on herself. And uh, she took that, uh, you know, leap of faith. Uh, uh, so it is, uh, I am a facilitator. A doctor is always a facilitator. And definitely a doctor uh, helps a patient to connect with the belief systems and build that confidence. Uh, from a patient point of view, if I uh, share, from a patient point of view, when the patient look at a doctor, it's a whole faith that they put on the doctor and definitely it is a responsibility. But not everything is also in the doctor's hand. We can only add, we can facilitate, we can give comfort, we can give that safe environment, we can give that hope. Yeah, the responsibility definitely lies on the shoulders. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it is a collective work between the doctor and the patient. It's a two-way process when the healing is concerned, where, where healing is coming. So they never give up on themselves. They 
trust the process. They are consistent with their treatment. That's the huge courage that a, uh, that a patient takes on uh, their level. So it's very humble of Anjana saying all that and giving credits to uh, them, but it is uh, you know combined effort of both the doctor uh, and the patient. That's very true. So yes, uh, I will uh, pass on to the Dr. Navneet as he was uh, mentioning about uh, how the thoughts and emotions, uh, um, you know, can uh, uh, lead to uh, unexplained fertility because every every issues, every problem has its roots uh, in the mind. Say, for example, it's endometriosis. It's a huge hopelessness that goes uh, inside before many before the manifestation of this problem according to our 22 years of work with the patients we have understood that there is an emotional conflict and there's a there's a thought which is blocked in the patient so if we remove that thought along with the medical treatment uh, the person can retain can you know uh, can uh, get back its uh, his uh, or her well being so that's uh, over to Dr. Navneet and please, sir. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I guess we had a very interesting video to understand how the mind works. So um, if I put this into a perspective, what has happened at some level, we all know and perhaps understood over a period of time, the kind of self-talk a patient or a client makes all the time. And it's not a talk which is made with the doctor. It is a talk which they make with themselves. That negative self-talk, a constant chatter that they have with their, themselves. And this constant chatter, what they make themselves at some level becomes that level of hypnosis, I would rather say it becomes a self-hypnotic conversations which they have with themselves often results into a failure in maybe uh, having a successful conception or maybe the stress level goes to a certain level where the possibility of miscarriage becomes huge. Perhaps at this point of time, I would like to quote a very powerful research which was published, I believe, in the European Society of Human, uh, uh, you know, uh, Human Reproduction and Embryology Conference, and I guess this is one of the very powerful research of its kind because the study was very powerful because it was the study was purely done uh, with nearly around, I believe, uh, 185 women uh, and who, who were actually hypnotized, you know. Uh, in a very positive state, the positive suggestions were implanted in the back of the mind. And they have realized that more than 28 to 30 percent of women could actually uh, become, you know, successfully pregnant after this. And this, uh, this entire element was documented and was published. And beyond that, I would also like to add that there has been a series of works which has already been conducted in this domain and perhaps it is also realized that hypnosis actually increases the natural chance of conception by 50% and that has been documented by the Journal of Fertility and Sterility in 2000. So a lot of things what we are actually talking right now is something that there is something at the thought level we constantly make suggestions in the back of our mind. So in our day-to-day -day experience of life, whatever that we are going through, there's a narrative, there's a talk, there's a thought, there is an emotion that we often narrate or describe in our own ways. And that does affect our lives. So from this whole understanding, how do we change the narrative? is the first objective to heal our body, mind, altogether. Because to heal the body, we have to heal the mind. And to heal the mind, we have to understand what are we trying to communicate to the mind. 
because many times we are not mindful about our conversations that we are making into ourselves. Obviously, when it comes to bringing a life into this world, bringing a child into this world, chances of conception becomes very difficult because at the back of the mind, there is a pressure. At the back of the mind, there is an expectation. At the back of the mind, there are references of other people that how did they could not succeed. Or the back of the mind, one's own failed experiences, how the body could not react appropriately, successfully. So this reference point has to be changed to discover the body's intelligence. Our body has its own intelligence. Otherwise, we would not have evolved as species at a genetic levels of our existence if we have reached up to this level, which means there is a body intelligence that we need to tap into. And that body's intelligence lies in our subconscious mind. So what do I'm talking about? We have a conscious mind. We have a subconscious mind. A lot of psychologists, neuropsychiatrists, neuropsychologists have done extensive work to study the concept of this human mind. So when we are talking about the subconscious mind, we are looking at the software program, which is controlling our hormones, which is controlling our each and every involuntary actions of the body, which is also looking at the nervous system, how the parasympathetic nervous system works, how the sympathetic nervous system works, which means entire element of our, how our mind and our body reacts. That software program is what we are looking at the subconscious mind. So a whole lot of elements when we are looking at the field of neuroscience, we are looking how this software is actually is functioning. So when we are relaxing the patient and trying to access this program to a great extent, we are able to tap into that unconscious belief systems which has been playing out in the client's day-to-day -day lives, everyday interactions with his or her loved ones and which is leading to any kind of hormonal imbalances. So if the happiness hormones are being compromised, if the hormones related to fertility is not up to the element that we are looking at, then there is a thought, there is an emotion which has gone haywire. And unless and until we sort that out correctly, there is a higher percentage of chances of the body not restoring to its correct positions or its, its own, uh, the levels of healing that it needs. So long and short of it, the simplest awareness to be cultivated is how are we mindfully seeing our experiences of our lives? And what we are doing in this entire modalities, you know, starting from hypnosis to healing to all those approaches is primarily to understand the thoughts, how it is translating into your emotions and how these emotions are being translated into action. Because when emotions are translated into action, it is going to affect your body. So if somebody is going through an emotional feeling that I don't feel loved in my life, the natural reaction, the body, how it is going to react will be entirely different, which means the levels of the happiness hormones definitely is going to affect if the person is constantly bombarded by this thought that I'm not loved enough. I'm not cared enough. I'm not supported enough. So which means every underlying emotional thought or a belief leads to has you know as an as an effect in the physical body or our endocrine systems. 
So if we want, so let's suppose on a very simpler level, if somebody is feeling a lot of fear, on a very basal level, the first and the foremost thing that the body um, might affect for many people is the digestive system. Many times, I'm not to say all the people, but many times, whenever the fear kicks into the body. And this is also some of the times, these are those people, I'm talking about a lot of researches which has been done in the area of the subconscious mind or the unconscious mind by the Royal College of Psychiatry in UK, uh, which primarily using with hypnosis, they have discovered that there is a link between the IBS, you know, irritable bowel syndromes, digestive disorders, and even to an extent, the hormonal imbalances that one experiences during the menstrual cycles is how the person processes that information around his or her universe. So if we want to change, obviously, I cannot change the external environment. So let's suppose if a person is going through a very domestic, you know, a conflicting marriage, the most difficult marriage, obviously, there, has, there is a psychological intervention to tackle the marriage. It's a different story. But beyond that, whether the marriage is successful or whether the marriage is unsuccessful, that's a different story. But the point here is how is the client reacting to it? How is the client perceiving his or her own life? How the client wants his or life to go ahead with? That the client has a grip. So a lot of things. So whenever, whenever we're looking at our life, we often feel our life is back and weird outside. We don't have a control in the external circumstances. And when we don't have a control in the external circumstances, what we can definitely have a control is ourselves. I'm going to narrate a very funny incident that has happened. I think when we started this whole conversation, Dr. Pankaj Salwar said that I got delayed. The funny thing was that happened was switching on the lift button and then I got trapped in the lift. So it took me two minutes to come out of the lift because the lights went off and I was just thinking whether I will be able to come out of the lift on time or not. But surprisingly, I did not panic. Why? Because I know it at some level, if I panic, I'm not going to do anything. So what did I do? I just took a three, three deep breaths, relaxed for a couple of minutes and tried to switch on the button once again. Accidentally, the lift, uh, you know, the button started working and I just tried to push it back and I could just, uh, you know, just pop out, jump out of it. But the point here is just giving you this funny incident that had happened in the morning. But similarly, like many things happen into our lives, which have no control at all. And when during those moments, how do we handle our emotions, our thoughts matters to a great extent? How do we handle the situation with the beliefs inside of us decides the external output of the situation, how our body is going to react. So a lot of our physiological disease or conditions. So whenever we are looking at the human body, what we are actually trying to work with, we are actually trying to work with specific genes, which are, which we're looking at IL-1, CFOS, CYP-117 in a, in a, in a way so that we have a specific change. And for that to happen, to have a specific, you know, working with at the very genetic levels of awareness, at the cellular levels of awareness, we need to access the subconscious mind in the most effective and in the most powerful ways. I hope I, I'm able to make sense. I, I just have a habit of keep on going on and on, but just wanted to ask everyone, uh, are we in the same uh, synchronicity or in the same pages or not? <laughs> no, no, sir. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are getting the gist of it that uh, we need to control our emotions first. Correct. Then we would be able to more, <laughs> do more justice to our patients. And uh, we are running a little short on time. So I would ask if any one of us in the audiences have any questions. Our experts are here. So we can solve our queries right here now. So I, I have this uh, query, sir. Uh, like, what, what do we do in a busy OPD? Like, we do not have, the doctor doesn't have time for counseling. 
that much and the counselors are not such well trained uh, right. we do not we still do not get well trained counselors in india who are who are uh, expert in infertility counseling as such so how to get it through in the busy opd with 50 patients sitting outside and we mm -hmm. we are looking at the time the one patient is taking so how to go about it you know, i always believe uh, every modality of healthcare needs to have a framework and uh, many times the software element has not been addressed correctly so i believe even if simple techniques of mindfulness is introduced to the client which is like a meditative process i'm not saying pure meditations mindfulness is slightly different we are helping the person to bring the awareness in the here and in the now and if they are taught correctly if they can do that exercise for the 5 to 10 minutes and bring their whole attention back into the present because the mind has a tendency to go i would rather say you know oscillate either to the past or either to the future and in that scenarios the emotions becomes haywire so either there needs to be a mechanism which is created maybe like a 50 patient sitting or something like that they go into a group meditation or something like uh, uh, looking at the screen or something uh, and uh, they are all going into a very relaxed state because those <clears throat> 10 minutes are very crucial right even if 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 somebody is going for a, me a regular medical examination of like a you know somebody is going through a pap smears or maybe even for a radical medical check checkups also there needs to be a mental preparation of a patient before actually goes into any treatments and that right, 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 preparation right. is needed and i think that is gets compromised many times and that's also one of the reasons why we don't see the results immediately the so, patient is not confident with the doctor many times you know obviously there is a fear in the back of the mind oh what will happen to my body will i be able to overcome this condition so sometimes people going through varied complications in the body the fear starts getting into it and that severe fear psychosis actually overrides our actions our thoughts and our recovery becomes very slower and many times patients don't respond right very true sir hey good afternoon dr navneet this is dr yeah. nasha here so you have dealt with the issue very very nicely i think very brief and concise talk into detail this thing whatever was possible in the given time now the only thing i have is you have dealt a lot from the patient's perspective but i want you to just focus a little bit from the clinician's perspective also because see we see around 50 patients in a day and by the end of the day all 50 patients their grief their sorrow their negativity that all goes with me so i think i think we are so stressed by the end of the day that how to like you know things are impossible you don't know sometimes you see a very good embryo still doesn't implant sometimes it is a very bad looking embryo still patient comes with a pregnancy so there is a lot of uncertainty and i think counseling sessions along with patients should be arranged for doctors as well so, so <laughs> maybe I, maybe maybe i would uh, i guess if if the time had permitted i would have uh, introduced a small technique or maybe just uh, within like 3 to 4 minutes i would have taught each of you a small technique dr gunjan can we go ahead with that technique please uh if the time permits <laughs> i mean just i mean it all depends on everyone <laughs> dr gunjan you are muted yeah please 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 sir we would like love to uh, learn that okay so this is one of the very popular techniques under hypnosis i would rather say uh, which is a very new technique because i think a uh, couple of years back this technique was not that much popular uh, there was another technique which was used which was like formally known as eft emotional freedom technique uh, long back it was considered to be mumbo jumbo but years later that became accepted with the medical fraternity in the year 2000 this was accepted by american psychological association uh, especially in the clinical psychology chapter so it it got accepted but many times with clients going through anxiety issues eft was also not working for many people and so in quite recently after the covid uh, you know covid issues covid later a lot of hypnotherapists in the european european uh, lands tried to develop a 
ancillary form or a approach of EFT, or perhaps similar to that, which had the elements of even not only EFT, but perhaps there are researches which supports how to work with the neuroscience. So this approach has its uh, elements coming from um, you know eye movement desensitization, which is also a very popular approach in psychology, where you are using a certain movements of the eye movements, and and perhaps you are able to desensitize your emotions which you are experiencing. So it is not just uh, you can you know just working with patients, but even for doctors, clinicians, therapists, or anyone who wants to find immediate recovery within a couple of two minutes or three minutes or five minutes. So it's like a very faster approach. So it has its um, you know, shadows with the eye uh, uh, movement desensitization and reprocessing approach also. And I'm sure 50 years down the line, it is uh, this technique will even overshadow the eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, which is the standard psychological approach to work with trauma and emotional conditions. So this technique that I'm going to talk about is havening. Havening is a European approach by which you are trying to change or rewire your emotions. How do we rewire it? We are utilizing the most simplest things. We don't need an equipment. We don't need to talk to anybody. We, in our space, safe space, three things to be done. Are we having a control of our human breaths? That's the first thing. Can we move our eyes to left and right? That's also, it is available. Third, do we know the countings? You know, one, two, three, four countings, if we are aware. And if our hands are, and are pretty much intact, flexible, can we tap? That is, if it is, that is also possible, we can do it. And last but not the least, the most simplest thing. If we can close our eyes in a very safe space, and meditate for a couple of seconds with the right affirmations. So if we have good affirmations written and just implanted correctly, we can work on. So I'm going to teach you in the next 30 seconds how we're going to do it. So uh, let's do it. I think, uh, can we put on the videos on or maybe like something like the video cameras on so that if, if you can start. Please put on your cameras, everyone. I know that we are, we, most of you have just got up in the morning, so <laughs> I do understand. So please, but it's Sunday, a... <laughs> Sunday, yeah. All right. So what mm -hmm. we're going to do is, the first and the foremost thing is, whenever we are very drained, whenever we are very messed up, you know, we know that, you know, heavy emotions have taken over, dark emotions, it could be mm -hmm. anger, sadness, any unexplained emotion. So when we are in the grip of the emotion, we need to unwind that emotion. We need to let go that emotion. So the whole process is how to let go it. So havening is of different type. I'm going to teach um, havening, one of the havening, very popular havening techniques where we are using suggestion-based approach. So there are seven types of havening which are used. So we're going to learn only one, one, one small uh, technique. So first and the foremost thing is whenever that emotion has taken over, sadness, anger, whatever it is. The first thing that we can control is the breath. Because nothing else is available. Because when we are in the grip of the emotion, if we are angry towards somebody, we are sad, upset, frustrated, fearful. No other techniques will work. Only the breath can work. Because the breath is that connection that leads to the increase of the oxygen levels and perhaps it is affecting your thought process big time. So we take start taking three deep breaths. Let's do it. Let's everyone, guys. Uh, let's take a three deep breaths. <laughs> let's take three deep breaths, everyone. And breathe in through your nose, lots and lots of positive energies. And breathe out through your mouth, all those tensions, all those worries, all those thoughts. Empty yourself. So this suggestion I'm making, but let's suppose you have to make it in the back of the mind. So empty yourself with all those emotions which doesn't serve you at this point. Just breathe out. I guess I want you to do this exercise so that you can feel it, you know. Just breathe out. All those tensions, all those worries, all those toxic impressions which you have buried maybe across time and space. And while breathing out, just make sure you're breathing out through your mouth. How do you blow a candle? You know, anniversary cake, birthday cakes, we are all familiar. How do we do it? Just breathe out. So just make sure you, all of you breathe out correctly. 
and exhale it three times. Once we did that, the first and the foremost is we all know what is tapping. So what we need to do is this is the shoulder, right? From here to our elbow, right? So we'll keep it like this. So this is the position. We're going to keep it like this and we're going to tap from here un until our elbows like this. Or begin to rub it, which is the most comfortable state. It will be different for different people because we are using the sense organs to enter the human mind. And this is a very faster work. It will not take time. You know, just see which is the rhythm that makes comfortable. It can be faster. It can be this one. Just see. It's uh, rubbing is good or tapping is good. It will be different for different people. Yeah. <laughs> rubbing is good for me. <laughs> Yeah, rubbing is good for you. So many people it's rubbing. But, and sometimes for some people it's a soft touch. Some people it is a, a hard touch. You know, it depends. Because how do we, how we get programmed? In yeah, our you know, uh, you know uh, lifted us. How did it take care of us? That, because that's the first introduction of the touch. And that is something that we know it. So do this. Consistently for the next 30 seconds. Whichever approach. Whether it is this thing. And then... Think about the episode that disturbed you at the moment. All of you guys, something that disturbed you, something that made you feel disturbed. I'm going to release in the next 30 seconds. You will be feeling good. You will be refreshed. So don't worry. So think about the episode that made you upset. It could be something that was uh, upsetting at the office, something that upsetting at the home, which you could not control. I mean, something you had no control at all. So we are just trying to get in touch with that feeling and get a note of that feeling. And just give a rating scale to it. On a scale of 0 to 5, 5 is the highest, 0 is the lowest. So give a rating to that emotion. Once you have that emotion in the back of the mind, I want you to look, use your eyes as a medium to wash it away. Which means for the next 20, uh, you know, you just need to count till 20. Just or 10. You know, just make sure in the back of the mind, you're moving your eyes, laterally moving your eyes to your left. Lastly, moving your eyes to your right. Left, right. Left, right. So even if you're doing 10 times, that would be great. But make sure when you're looking left and right, you're trying to wash away, cleanse all the emotions, which has just affected you right now. Just washing away with your eyes. So just imagining, visualizing, and feeling that every emotion that is making you feel powerless in your life, you're just washing away. Lastly, moving your eyes towards the left, Laterally moving your eyes towards the right. Laterally moving towards your left. Laterally moving towards your right. You have to do it 10 times. One, you can count in the backwards of your mind also. Two, laterally moving towards your eyes. Laterally moving towards your left. Three, laterally moving towards your right. Make sure your head doesn't move. It is fixed and <laughs> your eyes moves. Okay. Okay. So laterally moving towards your left. Laterally moving towards your right. Laterally moving towards the left. Laterally moving towards your right. Laterally moving towards the left. That we moving towards the right. That we moving towards the left. That we moving towards the right. And now, just make sure once you do that, again try to tap it, just for the next thirty seconds. Yeah, just make sure tap it or rub it. You know. And then, either give an affirmation which you feel very powerful while with the tapping. This time, again you move your eyes towards the left and right with the affirmation. So the affirmation, whichever that you wish to give, should be strong enough to counter the emotional trouble. So many times we all know that we get into the same trouble again and again. So the affirmation that can suit us, if we are able to create it. So I'm going to just make sure uh, I give you an affirmation that uh, will work for you. Um, let's suppose I think this whole group of gathering is more women. So I'll try to make sure the affirmation is customized. Uh, with a women's perspective. So let's uh, to repeat the affirmation and we're going to do this and make sure your eyes are moving towards left and right. So the affirmation can be like, I'm an empowered woman making empowered choices in my relationships and in my life. I'm an empowered woman making empowered choices in my relationships and in my life. I'm an empowered woman making empowered choices in my relationships and in my life. So make sure you're doing it and, you know, uh, rubbing it. And also uh, this time you are bringing a new element into the picture. You are now 
not cleaning, but you are affixing in your mental impression. And this mental impression is saying that I am an empowered woman making empowered choices in my relationship with my life. So you're moving your eyes left and right. Simultaneously, you're tapping. And when you're tapping, you're trying to tap in the men. You know, actually what is happening, you're trying to tap in the energy meridians of the body. There are certain energy meridians centers of your body which can activate a certain emotions. So I want everyone, each one of you to repeat this affirmation. I am an empowered woman making empowered choices by relationship. I'm an empowered woman making empowered choices in my relationship. Now take a deep breath once again. Breathe into your nose and breathe out through your mouth. As you are just doing this, just make sure you're doing it and just come back to the normal scene. Here you don't have to close your eyes. Here you don't have to make sure others are watching or not. Others are observing. You are in your own space. But it's like a quick 30 seconds back. If you do, if you are able to focus on your breath work, if the tapping is correct, it's stimulating your body because obviously it's using all your sense organs of the body and trying to re-implant a new thought or a new suggestion because the grip of that emotion is so powerful that you want to just change it, change the dynamics completely. You want to just break the circuit. See, interventions are needed. For sure, you know, you need psychotherapeutic interventions, you need counseling, you need other healing approaches, no doubt about it. But the first thing is before reaching any therapist, you need to break the circuit. If somebody is going through a very darker emotions, first is come out of the emotion, then only you can give a call to the doc. Or you, then only you can do your work as a practitioner, as a therapist, as a doctor. So first is to orient your mind in a way. So this can be something that you can do just before your... Uh, you know, surgeries, this can be done something that you can just before your consultations, just to make sure that you are oriented correctly to implement your work in the most magnificent ways. I think I, uh, to, to, uh, I think uh, uh, Navneet, we also need to tell them the very quick one which uh, we use before and after all the sessions. That okay. one also help them. Yes. Progressively, I, 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 you can, uh, you know, expand it in a better way. But what we use after uh, we, we have back-to-back -back sessions and it is very overwhelming sometimes because we are dealing with human emotions in a depth. After one hour session, it becomes uh, uh, very, very overwhelming. So a very quick technique which helps us uh, is holding your fist tight, like front in front. You all can do this. Holding your fist tight. Put all your stress in the fist. Ye fist, jaise, jaise aapke thoughts, socho ki jitne worries hain, tensions hain, ya jo bhi stress hai, wo sara is fist mein aara hai. Aur jaise jaise fist mein aara hai, fist tight hoti ja rahi hai. Keep taking deep breaths and just put, make your fist tighter as you are putting all your stress in the fist. Once you have done that, we will just through this, all the stress that is in the fist, like with a breath work, huh. 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 so it's three times we do. And this is a quick way of getting out of the stress. It's a wonderful technique that what we use in, um, in our sessions because we don't get that much time and having technique is one of very wonderful technique where you can regulate your emotions, what uh, Navneet uh, just uh, shared and it's really one of the wonderful uh, technique. We can always practice it when once we go back home and uh, before the bedtime, it works wonders. Also, being a doctor, because we are uh, spending so many hours uh, with the patient, with the pains of the people, it's very important. We forget. We forget to zone out from our professional, uh, so, uh, yes. uh, you know, uh, uh, area. We go back to home. Once we go back home, we are still in the hooked with the uh, case studies. We are still hooked with the patient energy, and immediately the child comes to you, wants your attention. Your husband wants your attention, or home, your home wants attention. But we are not able to. Uh, give that attention. So it's very important for every doctor. It's important that you put your doctor quotes there in the hospital. Though it's not easy, it's not easy, but it's very important when you go back home, you spend that 15 minutes. Also make your peer, parents, your children and husband understand, I just need this 15 minutes to zone out. 
वहां से जोन आउट होना है तो वो पंद्रह मिनट यू रिक्वायर फॉर योर सेल्फ एंड दैट इज द टाइम यू कैन डू है टाइम वेन यू कैन डू दिस फर्स्ट वर्क ऑल्सो दिस इज वेरी क्विक क्विक टेक्निक दैट कैन हेल्प यू डी क्लटर यू डी स्ट्रेस यू I think that helps. That was a wonderful, wonderful tip, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, I will. We'll try to implement it for sure. And I, I, I'm sure this one hour could not have done justice with people like you. Uh, we wish it was an entire day, and we would love you to to hold a workshop for us doctors someday. And I'm sure we would all love to join you. <laughs> so please let us know if you make any such plans we would love to uh, learn this from you and Definitely. from the entire ic family sir had to leave for some emergency i would thank you all thank you so much to you and for being with us on this lazy sunday morning sparing your time out on on a sunday so thank you so much thank you sir thank you ma'am and with this i like to just <laughs> close this meeting off and uh, until next time we see you all again definitely okay thank you thank you so much goodbye okay thank you thank you everyone and thank you all the participants we love to have you and we'll be in touch <laughs>